The Jays have emerged as a potential landing spot for superstar Japanese pitcher Kodai Senga and Nate Pearson, who was once a top prospect for the Toronto Blue Jays, is now tearing up the Dominican Winter League, so you won't want to miss this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Rionis, alongside co-host Nick Goss, and we've got a lot to unpack for you today. But first, we want to thank you for helping us hit 2K subscribers. The support has been unreal, and it's just been a great ride making these videos. Yeah, like you said, it's been unbelievable. We hit 2K so fast. It feels like just yesterday we hit 1K. Quick reminder, 85.3% of you guys that are watching are not subscribed. So if you enjoy the content, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Daily Jays content every single day. So the support's been unbelievable. Thank you guys for all that. And let's get right into the first topic of this video because we have a lot to get into. So Blue Jays very interested in Kodai Senga. A report came out just yesterday about Kodai Senga that I'll pop up right now. Basically, the market for Japanese star pitcher Kodai Senga is taking shape. The Toronto Blue Jays, Texas Rangers, Seattle Mariners, and Angels are interested in signing the right-hander. Senga posted a 1.94 ERA and 156 strikeouts over 144 innings in Japan. The hurler doesn't need to go through the posting system since he's accrued enough service time to test international free agency, meaning that all signs are pointing to Kodai Senga joining the major leagues and obviously, a few, we had a video a few days ago about this, but now more and more reports are coming out. The Blue Jays are, uh, you know, might be one of the favorites to land him. So what are your initial thoughts on that, Peter? We'll have some footage to show you guys of Kodai Senga in case you are not familiar with him. Well, I mean, we're not familiar with him. Uh, we don't get to see him too often. Obviously, the best we could do is film and just some clips that we see on YouTube. But two things really st uh, stand out to me on this front. So uh, as you said, he accrued enough um, service time in Japan to test the international free agent market. So that means whatever team signs him won't have to pay a fee to that team to get him, which was usually the case for other stars like Hugh Darvish, like Shohei Otani. Uh, the teams that did end up getting them had to pay the teams in Japan. So the Jays or whatever team gets him won't have to do that. And the second thing is that we mentioned it in the last video about him, so that the Jays have a good relationship with his agent. I'm not sure how good of a relationship it is. I'm not sure what exactly uh, the the parameters are for that relationship, but that's something to monitor as well. Yeah, um, that's a very good point about the uh, international and paying the paying the players. All signs point to him coming towards the MLB. And in case you don't know a lot about him, um, Kodai Senga has been up to 102 miles per hour. Throws a ghost fork ball, slider, curve, and cutter. 1.89 ERA in 148 innings. Senga's agent noted Kodai would like to play in a big market on a win now team and is versed in slash wants to learn more about analytics. This points to the Blue Jays a little bit. You know, we are a win now team. We have very good analytics. We're advancing that field, which led to another tweet by a, uh, a known Jays fan on Twitter. Big market check, win now team check, versus in analytics check. At the very least, you're getting a high leverage reliever with swing and miss potential, but he easily fills in the number three spot in the rotation as well. And I agree with him. Now, obviously, you it's not true that at the very least you're getting a high leverage reliever because a lot of people said that about Shun Yamaguchi and ended up being out of the league after like 15 games. However, mm -hmm. Shun Yamaguchi did not throw 102. And in case you're unfamiliar with Kodai, I'm just going to show you guys some clips now while we talk about him. You can enjoy it in the background here. He is um he throws 102, which I did not know he got that high up. And his mm -hmm. ghost fork ball, meaning it just disappears, is you're ready to see it right now, is unbelievable. It just drops out of the strike zone, and it's just crazy. Do you have any thoughts on, on Kodai, Peter? Yeah, well, if, if you see delivery right there, it's free and easy. It's free-flowing, so he just makes it look effortless out there. And it looks like he's not even exerting any effort. And he's just pumping 102 with an unbelievable slider, unbelievable fork ball. And uh, Japanese pitchers, they have great mechanics. All of them do. Um, and it's just something that uh, that they're they're taught at a very young age. And you could see that in Kodai Senga. And I, I also, I agree with you. I don't think he's going to be a back end of the bullpen type uh, high leverage reliever. That, that's not what you're bringing him over here for. I heard uh, some rumblings that he's going to get like a, a five-year, six-year contract at twenty million per. So you you don't you're not paying that much money for a reliever. You're paying that much money for 
a top end starter and that's exactly what kind of potential he has in the majors yeah i agree and the big thing about him is you're if you're paying 20 million dollars annually his ceiling is high it is probably as high as anyone on the free agent market not named Degrom and verlander his ceiling might even be one of a verlander type obviously like ceiling being the best he could be but getting an arm that can throw 102 with a nasty fork ball that is just it's really unheard of. It reminds me a bit of Shohei yeah. Otani when it comes to the velocity. We all know how he turned out. It. Um. I'm really excited about it. And you know, no matter what team he goes to, I'm excited about it. Yeah, and I'll I'll add to that, Nick. I think he has a higher ceiling than either of those guys, just because he's in the prime of his career right now. He's 29 years old. Jacob Degrom is 35. Justin Verlander is going to be 40 starting next season. So I don't know. Give me. Give me the guy in his prime that's pumping 102. I'd love to see him on the Blue Jays. Yeah, I think definitely, at, especially at this point of their careers, you can maybe make an argument for one more year, Justin Verlander, but yeah, Kodai sure. uh, and DeGrom, of course, but Kodai, I don't know. I'm excited for him. No matter what team he goes to, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see him pitch regardless, and it's good to see mm-hmm. these international talents coming over. So we'll get into the next topic now, which is also pretty exciting on the pitching front. Uh, Nate Pearson has been dominating the Dominican Leagues. Now, he's been dominating for the past... 11 games he's played the past week or two, and we wanted to wait until he fish officially finished before we, you know, had a video breaking down so we could see his, you know, his whole scope of his uh, his outings, and it was absolutely phenomenal. And I'll pop up a screenshot here now. As you can see, Nate Pearson's stint in the Dominican Winter League is coming to an end relatively soon. It's officially over now, but it's all positive. The stuff has been jumping. Just five hits, 15 Ks across 11 innings pitched, and he's going to come into camp next spring as a one-time through-the-order relief option. We've been hearing about him all over Twitter. He's been all over Reddit. He has been... You could not have asked for a better outing, or I guess a better performance out of him in the Dominican League, and that is what we need out of him if he wants to have a chance to uh, to break the, I guess, the bullpen or the rotation if he wants to go that route. Yeah, well, he had a really unlucky season this past year. He was injured. He was out uh, for the entire season pretty much. He only got started later on, so it was good that he got sent to the Winter League and he got to pitch some innings, get some uh, get some live ABs under his belt, and... He's just looked great. He's been pumping, and uh, I I don't agree with the with that tweet in the sense that uh, he's going to be a one time through the order relief option. I think he's got back end of the bullpen type stuff. He's shown that uh, in his brief stint with the Blue Jays the years before. So I, I don't know. I think uh, I think Nate Pearson has a chance to be an impact arm in that bullpen and not just some long relief guy. I mean, I, I think the ship has sailed on him being a starter. I don't think he has that type of uh, of uh, arm uh, arm durability anymore to be a starter in the major leagues but i think he definitely has a shot to to be an impact arm for this jays team going forward yeah i think he'd come in for an eighth inning seventh inning throw 100 and whatever he throws 100 probably now is, is about his max and then he just shuts him down from there so we'll keep an eye out on nate pearson just wanted to update you guys on that it's it's really exciting if you're a uh, i guess if you're a nate pearson fan but we'll mm-hmm. get into the final topic of the video which is about dan shulman now we're all fans of Dan, and it also we'll have a talk about Buck Martinez a little bit here too, but it's Dan Shulman leaving ESPN and officially gets going full-time with the Blue Jays. So we'll pop up a, uh, a screenshot here about Dan. Dan Shulman says goodbye to 24 years of ESPN baseball. So essentially, Dan Shulman is walking away from ESPN and is hopes to call a Blue Jays World Series with Sportsnet. Peter, I'll let you talk about this and what it may mean for uh, Buck Martinez's future in Toronto. Yeah, I try not to let my bias get the best of me on this channel. I, I really do, but I'm going to be honest and say Dan Shulman is the best play-by-play voice in the major leagues, and I don't think it's particularly close either. Now, one good thing, I'll, I'll stick with Dan Shulman for, for a little bit here. He is still going to be calling college basketball games on ESPN, so if you like college basketball, which I do, that's a good thing. You'll still get to hear Dan Shulman's awesome voice calling those great games so that's that's great but uh i think we alluded to it a couple videos ago we said this might be the end for buck martinez we know that he was battling cancer and struggling a lot with his health this past season so it's not a surprise to me that he's uh he's called his final game as a as a blue jays play-by-play voice but he'll definitely be missed his energy his unbelievable home run calls and i mean i grew up listening to buck martinez and couldn't couldn't have imagined a better voice to grow up with uh, calling the team that I love. So 
uh, we'll we'll miss you, Buck, if you are gone. And and thanks for everything that you've done for the Blue Jays. Yeah, it's not confirmed yet, but people are starting to rumblings are starting to get out there about him departing. So, yeah, that'll wrap up the video. A bit on a bit of a sad note, but uh, yeah. you know, either way, it's not sad for Bucks. At the end of the day, it's he's doing what makes him happy. If he is gone, and we'll have another video, I'm sure, another topic in a video about Buck if he uh, if he is officially done but thank you guys again for all the support it has been unbelievable we're on the road to 3k now it's insane we can even say that so thank you guys so much and we will see you in tomorrow's video